Hello, Internet! So nice to see you. Today, I'm going to share with you a fantastic technique that takes plain licks, guitar, lead guitar licks, and transforms them into licks that are way more interesting, way more musical. This technique, though, has two big problems. Problem number one, it's hard. And problem number two, it does not work all the time. So why am I showing this to you? I mean, I'm coming clean, right? But why am I showing this to you? Well, there are two reasons why I'm showing it, this to you. Because first, when it works, it is absolutely, totally worth it. And reason number two, because some of you guys are writing me that I'm always doing simple stuff. Cut your teeth on this one, guys. This is way harder to play. Or at least, in some cases, it can be way harder to play. In some cases, it's actually pretty simple. So... As usual, your mileage may vary and all this kind of stuff. But again, when it works, totally worth it, totally worth it. So let's go and see what this is all about. That's one thing I find supremely annoying in the internet culture of guitar playing, okay? Is that you go around, this is relevant, I'm gonna say. You go around on the internet, you see YouTube videos, Instagram videos, and everybody is playing perfectly. Not a note off. N nothing. Everything is perfect. The tone is perfect. The execution is perfect. The timing is perfect. Those guys are absolutely perfect. Why? Because they took 300 take of that video, of that one minute video, and they posted the one good, the good, the good one, and they eliminated 299 bad ones. Okay. And this gives kind of a false impression of what it is to play guitar. Okay. In reality, we screw up all the time. Okay. I at least I do. Maybe I'm the only one. Maybe, maybe everybody out there is perfect and I'm the only one and I'm here telling this to you. And you guys are looking at me like, poor Tomas, so you're the only one screwing up. But somehow I don't think this is the case. I'm going to use my background in science again to destroy this thing. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to introduce you to Mr. Richard Feynman's method. Richard Feynman is kind of a legend um, among scientists. It, few people know it outside science, but this guy was an absolute genius, Nobel Prize, okay. Uh, great bongo player. There are lots of stories about him. This guy, when he won the Nobel Prize, used this Nobel Prize lecture to say that he was annoyed at many things in science because everybody was publishing the good results and ne was never publishing when they failed. Because in reality, when you, when you work in science, you take a lot of wrong turns, there are many dead ends, and you wanted to have a super possibility to show all the wrong turn and dead ends and failed ideas, et cetera, et cetera. So he used his Nobel Prize lecture to explain all his mistakes, okay? Which was a great lecture because it gave you an idea that those guys don't really know uh, everything already. They just try really hard, they fail a lot of times until they find something. And this is the same for us too, okay? So I want to show you one thing. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you a different procedure right now, and I'm gonna show you when this procedure works and when this procedure does not work, okay? Because, I mean, not, this is a way, that those procedures that I'm showing you are ways to generate variations for leaks. Not all those variations will be uh, artistically relevant or good or good sounding or, or, or play or even playable. The picture is there only to keep your attention. Okay. Octave displacement. You take a single note out of a lick and you move this note one octave up or down and leave the rest of the lick as it is. Not all combinations will work out. That's the part of the lecture where I'm embarrassed because some of those lick are nearly unplayable. So you're gonna see me fail. When I say you're gonna see me fail, I mean it. Okay. So our original, uh, original, <laughs> our obvious pentatonic scale. And then we choose one note and we move up an octave. Now I'm not picking the first or last note because then we get something similar to the pivoting. I'm taking only the notes inside the lick. I mean, it's not bad sounding, but it's a bit of a problem to play it. Second variation, big, big, bit of a jump. Oh, by the way, um, I just tapped this thing down this way for clarity. I'm not claiming this is the best position on the fretboard to play them. If you like the sound, you may want to experiment and find a better position on the fretboard to play all these. Uh, next. That's actually pretty good.
the last one is usable. I mean, with a bit of phrasing. What if we displace those notes down? Next variation is going to sound this way. Oh, that's the, oh, that's the hard one. No. It sounds pretty good, actually. Okay, next one. No, sorry, that's the hard one. <laughs> okay. And the next one. How about the blues lick? That's where the pain starts to come out. Okay, so original blues lick. The, the jump after, just, just right after the bend. And it's a bit of a pain. Okay, what if we jump afterwards? Yeah, it's a bit of a pain, this one too. And it's safe to say that I will never use any of those variations in an improvisation, okay? What if we displace one note down? Well, that's usable. That's actually pretty good. That's something I would use. Okay, and the last one, it's a, a symphony of um, rolling motion for the, for the index finger because all those files need to be played with the same thing. Well, you can try to play with the different fingers, but... This page is mostly usable. The page before, no, <laughs> okay, or at least not for me. Maybe maybe it's the, the right thing for you, but you see, I'm showing you, when you apply this stuff, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So if something sounds bad, keep trying new variation. You're gonna find good ones. What happens to the arpeggio? Well, still a pretty big jump, but doable more or less. Second variation is actually playable. Last variation, it's the easiest. Okay, and if I displace the note down instead, and the second, I like this one. Uh, the third one, probably I could play that E note, uh, not on the sixth string, but maybe it's better if I play it on the on the fifth string. But anyway, I just wanted to try these either on those examples, maybe maybe try first uh, the good sounding ones. <laughs> don't don't go straight on the slide where where it was unplayable, okay? And again, you can apply these to also to your links. As you've seen, sometimes we need to change position to the leak. We need to play it here or here or here. So it is very useful when you're working on this idea to know your fretboard really well, to know all your positions, to know where to move around without thinking too much. Now, if you really want to know all your scales and all your fretboards that you can move around without thinking too much, I totally recommend my course, Master of the Mods. Master of the Mods, it's not a book and it will never be a book. It's a complete video course made by guitar players for guitar players that take you from zero to become an expert in using mods and scales. This course is for people who are not afraid to do some exercises. Theory is important, applying theory is more important. So the course is taught through exercises that you have to do and the more you practice them, the better you become. If you have just a minute, check out Master of the Mods at the link on the top right. If you like this video, smash the that like button, don't forget to subscribe and click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any idea, any feedback, any suggestions, please write them down in the comments. I love to read from you. This is Tommaso Zillio of musictheoryforguitar.com and until next time, enjoy.